There we go. So yeah, I can start us off. We uh we we did the social justice and critics of color focus team, and oh wait, there we go. Okay, so our rough timeline was mainly the challenge being to add diversity of perspective within the arts views, which we thought could happen through bringing in people of color to be writers, which would then result in more people being interested from the audience perspective to read those perspectives as well. Uh, our ideas for how to achieve those goals were to have the arts use articles translated into other languages, which makes it more accessible to communities of color and reach out to different people of color within the BU community. Uh, and our final deliverables, the deliverables being the POC writers and translated articles for Bill. So the overview of what we've done is we created uh, attractive visual aids for the arts views, reached out to various academic departments, reached out to the WTBU departments, and various student organizations as well. So kind of put our feelers out there everywhere. And so this is the first thing, one of like the first things we did in the process, and Sarah can talk about that more. Um, so one of the very first deliverables that we came up with was to make this poster. Um, we kind of added, we took some of the mission statement that was posted in the Arts Views website and um, also wrote like what the benefits of writing for the Art Views would be. So it would be to critique art, uh, get published and to build up your resume. Uh, we also included social media um, uh, handles as well as a contact to contact in case anyone was interested. Um, we brought this to the CFA uh, and the three major schools, so the School of Theater, Visual Arts, and Music. Um, and we got as far as talking to the School of Theater about potentially sending this out or, or um, showing it to the students, um, but they kind of had an issue with like, uh, what, um, like it's not like really a big deal for people to write crit critiques. Um, other than the School of Visual Arts, but like the School of Visual Arts didn't really respond to us. Um, but um, we hung our these posters around where we lived to sort of spread the word. Um, so yeah, that's what this was. Yeah, and then so second thing, reach out to heads of language departments and just like different program coordinators within the language departments because we weren't really sure like who exactly did what, administratively speaking. Um, so yeah, we reached out to a bunch of different faculty members in the different language departments like Romance Languages, African Studies, World Language and Literature, and the new MFA translation program. Uh, out of the 18 faculty contacted, less than half responded, and most of the responses, I want to say like three at least out of the seven that responded, were just like telling us to contact somebody else who had also already been contacted, so it was kind of like a loop. Um, and then, so when we had discussed in our opening email about maybe, uh, of how to incentivize higher level language students because they're really the only ones with the language skills to properly translate something of quality, uh, how it could be incentivized, I threw out the culture pass, which is something that's done in lower, la lower level language courses, and also just possibly extra credit of some source for the cultural experience, but this is an excerpt from one of the emails, which is just that they didn't think it would really be enough motivation uh, that'd be worth offering because some professors might just be personally uh, hesitant to offer extra credit, which is obviously their grading choices for their classes. And they didn't think the culture pass or other things would be uh, sufficient for the motivation. So yeah, basically, the, what, and that's just one excerpt of it, basically of the emails that were actual like full responses, not just referring to someone else within the departments. They were basically saying translation is a major undertaking that requires a pretty specialized skill level and upper level skill level. And of people who have the proper skill set to do that, they want to be paid uh, like minimum wage or most likely more. So, yeah. Um, so then we reached out to various academic departments across like BU, um, more specifically Common CAS. Um, we thought 
like we went through the list of all academic departments on campus and try to pick out ones that were relevant to like the arts views and to writing art criticism. Um, so as listed here, English, African Studies, uh, Institute for Cultural Religion, World Affairs, Creative Writing, Women's Gender, Sexuality, Party, uh, Anthropology, African American Studies, and then again, all of COM. Um, I reached out to the Director of Marketing and Communication, so the person who's like writing out the newsletters essentially that go out to all COM students. Um, we got decent response rate, the people um, with check marks by their names are people who um, responded and responded like with something that was like, yes, we will put this in our newsletter. Like, yes, we will do this. Um, the X's designate people who like either didn't respond or were like, we can't do this or we don't have a newsletter or something other um, than that. Um, and again, our main focus was like, if we can get some sort of like professional um, email, like if, like for example, like if I got an email from another BU student, I probably wouldn't take it as seriously as if I got it from like my department head. Um, so that was like our motivation behind that. Um, we don't really know the success rate of those things. Oh, sorry. Um, just because we don't have Bill's email um, and can't track like who actually responded um, based on the flyer. So unsure about that. Hopefully Bill got at least one or two um, from the newsletters that went out. Oops, sorry. I can talk about this one since Vicky isn't here. Um, I'll talk briefly. She did a lot more than what I'm probably going to say, um, but she did reach out to all of the WTBU news and radio people, um, was in contact with all of these emails that you see here, um, going back and forth with a few of them. Um, I think she can she can talk about like her response rate because I don't know it off the top of my head, um, but yeah. Go back to there we go. Um, so I think it's a good chance to like more Chinese students get involved in this, and try to attract them to write critique for the art fields. So uh, I tried to contact with several Chinese student organizations uh, on WeChat and only one of them uh, replied to me and said, yes, they can do that. So uh, I translated our project in Chinese and sent to them and they post on their official account on WeChat. But so far has no one contacted us. Um, I think maybe because, uh, you know, lots of Chinese students go back to China during this pandemic time. And uh, in China, lots of uh, websites are uh, blocked, like Google. So it's hard for them to uh, write critiques. And also many students uh, suffer from online courses because they're in different time zones and uh, um, they let them uh, have no ex uh, extra energy to spend time on uh, write critiques. Yes. Um, so now I'll quickly just go over some of the problems that we ran into throughout the semester. Um, so one of them um, was a group member leaving <laughs> mid-semester, um, but then also like we had sort of been counting on like splitting the work a certain way. Um, so like some of the deliverables that they were supposed to deliver on um, just happened too late in the semester for any of the other group members to pick it up, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, um, that was one thing that we ran into. We wanted to reach out to more student groups um, and like places like BU Gigs. I'm not sure if you guys know where, where that, what that is on Instagram um, and like other just like non non-BU affiliated, but also like student group um, oriented uh, places. Um, getting the job posted under quick jobs, I think that worked for as long as the job was up. 
I think we ran into trouble with like keeping the job posting up um, under it being a quick job. Um, and Bill, I'm not sure if um, Vicky talked to you about that. I think she said that we got like around seven people to like email you, um, which is pretty good. But again, it's just like keeping that job posting up. Um, See, can, can you hear me? Do you want me to, I'll chime in now. I got about, I think five people who were interested in the, you know, sort of the internship job as well as sort of writing for the arts views. And I've emailed all of them and I haven't heard back. So I don't know, it's been about maybe a week or two. So I have contacted them. And in terms of other critical interest, I had two students who simply emailed me about perhaps writing for the arts views. And I have gotten back to them. One of them has gotten back to me and now we're working on where, what she wants to review. So right now I'd say maybe it was seven or eight in all with maybe two interested in writing for the Arts views and the others indicating interest in the internship. Although I haven't heard back from them. I got back to all of them and said I need to follow up and I needed, wanted to talk to them, at least sort of do a Zoom or get some idea about what, when they would be available and they haven't done any follow up. And if I may say so in terms of the lack of interest, I'll say that that sometimes is a problem. I'll have people sending me an email indicating that they're interested I'll write a follow-up email saying, oh, that's great. Let's get together or send me some ideas. And I sometimes don't hear back. So I'm hoping they'll, they'll get back to me. We will see. Yeah, and I think um, that's sort of why the asterisk is there because I think like, um, it's not necessarily a lack of interest, I'd say, but maybe more so a lack of like motivation to like follow through um, and also slash incentive to follow through. Um, so we, we do cite the pandemic as like um, definitely exacerbating financial hardship, not only for like the arts world in general, but then doubly so for people of color, um, specifically uh, students <laughs> on top of that. So, um, I think it was just, it's a hard ask, especially now to like have people um, commit a lot of time and also not be paid for it. Um, so that was like something that we kind of ran into. And even like if it was um, like $50 or so, um, again, by the amount of work that you had to do, um, that doesn't add up to like minimum wage, <laughs> not even by a long shot. So um, I think that was like one of the things that we ran into. Um, it was just like, it was just really hard to convince people to like spend their time doing this when there's so many things um, pulling them away from um, doing like, like almost hobby work essentially or freelance work. Um, and then for future or questions to consider for future, um, what is the motivation behind recruiting critics of color? Um, and like what exactly, um, what exactly does the arts fees want from having critics of color um, write for them? Um, and I think if we get clear more on our why, we can sort of, um, sort of focus in on solutions by like sort of refining what exactly the problem is and what we want um, and what Arts Fuse wants. Um, so yeah, I think just refining the why will help us understand like what we exactly need to do besides like what we did this semester, which was just like casting a super wide net and like crossing our fingers and hoping that like somebody does something. Um, is there a way that uncouple racism from art criticism's traditional standards? Um, talked about this a little bit in the beginning, um, but there's a huge history <laughs> with um, with art criticism and uh, it's racism. And I don't think that like us not talking about it is going to be helpful, especially if we're trying to recruit critics of color. Um, I think all of us need to be on the same page as far as like what the arts fuse standards are. Um, and then that leads to the second question of like, how can we sort of decolonize these art standards and make it more accessible to people? Um, 
And yeah, and then could it be, that also leads to the last question is, could it be more beneficial to market the arts views as a place for arts discussions instead of arts criticism? Um, so yeah, that was our group. Any questions? <laughs>